So my speech is today about the rules, which are exactly the golden rules uh, to improve the diagnosis and especially the microbiological diagnosis in uh, prosthetic joint uh, replacement. So these are my disclosure. In the last two years, I received grants and a royalty from uh, this uh, company. Let's start with this uh, with this uh, interesting, uh, um, let's say, um, excursus about the how to made, uh, make simple the diagnosis. Firstly, I think it's important. Uh, the kind of a relationship you have with the orthopedics and especially which kind of the uh, relationship uh, the orthopedics uh, have with the clinical lab. So I mean uh, that uh, both uh, they uh, must stay in strict contact uh, to apply to be compliant with the best practice uh, uh, to define exactly which is and uh, how to diagnose the prosthetic joint infections. That's why a few years ago, we started this adventure, very challenging, because we checked at uh, that time, uh, at least uh, 87 uh, different references. We involved uh, several, several authors around the world, and uh, uh, we involved eight different countries, as, as you can see here. This paper has been published in the 2019 with great, great success. Uh, this was the key points that we wanted to establish the, uh, till the beginning. Uh, I mean, uh, the uh, identification of the infection site, it's very important. You need to localize where the infection is uh, seated, how to avoid contamination during the sampling, how to increase the reliability of your diagnosis, and especially how to avoid the fast negative as well as the fast positives. Looking at this particular aim, we finally try to uh, establish 10 different golden rules from one to 10, uh, just to avoid any mistakes and just to avoid any different rule and to establish the same rule around the world. Let's to see what uh, are these type of rules that uh, any orthopedics and any microbiologist uh, must follow for any diagnosis. The first is this do not use swabs. As you can see in this, uh, in this cartoon, you can see that uh, this surgeon collected very, very huge amount of uh, samples. In this situation, for sure, you can increase the reliability. You can increase your positivity of your bug. You can catch the bug, but at the same time, you, the risk is to contaminate and to collect other microbes around the site of infection. And so the number of fast positive can be very, very high. The second rule is uh, please collect the right number of samples. The samples can be explanted biomaterials, synovial fluid, uh, periprosthetic tissue, what you want, but not more than six or seven. Uh, because if you increase your ability to collect sample, again, as you, this surgeon uh, done many years ago, collecting 18 different samples, of course, you increase the cost of your diagnosis, but at the same time, you increase also the fast positivity and the rate of contamination. Uh, uh, four points are very, very relevant. The point three uh, regarding the behavior of the orthopedic, how to avoid sample contamination. Of course, uh, the orthopedic needs to use clean gloves, uh, sterile instruments, instrumentation, 
need to avoid any contact with the skin of the patient at any time. But the point four, five, and six are very, very relevant just to avoid the number of false positive or false negatives as well. So it's really important when you collect the samples that you must use closed and especially sterile uh, transportation systems for any samples. Uh, of course, the, cert the, the laboratories uh, uh, need to use uh, uh, certified uh, procedural methodology and uh, they have to explain how to avoid false positive or how to avoid fast negatives as well. But the point six is, uh, is uh, very, very important. How to use antibiofilm techniques for the explanted materials, but also for biopsies. Because as you know, many microorganisms are inside, are, are very, very adhered to the tissue, to the uh, biomaterials, and it's really difficult to detach this bacteria to be released and to be detected at the same time. Uh, we have a different, at this regard, we have a different uh, situation. Uh, one is uh, the sonication. The sonication can be used only for explanted, for solid materials and not for biopsies, for instance. And this is a real, uh, a very important uh, limit. But the problem is the, 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 of the sonication are the risk of contamination. Uh, more uh, bags or more tube you use and much more will be the risk of contamination during the handling from the surgery room to the lab. So the means is that the probably if you use a, a huge amount of bag and tube and so on, the risk of false positive is very, very high. Another situation is the time consuming. Per sample, per patient and per sample, in general, you spend around one hour and a half or two hours in the best conditions. That's why around the world and especially we in Italy, we are using, uh, we use the, this uh, particular uh, closed system uh, serving for the collection, for the transportation, and at the same time, which is more important to detach the microorganisms on the biofilm, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the biomaterial, on the tissue by use, chemical compound called, called DTT, deteriorator. A compound is a chemical compound able to uh, disgregate the biofilm, the biofilm and the release many, many bacteria. So another point of very relevant is the incubation time of the culture. As you can see in this elegant study performed in the USA, you can see here that uh, uh, prolonging the, the, the incubation of the culture till 14 days, you can increase your reliability till 90, 19%. So we are sure to identify in such cases, uh, aerobics, anaerobics, and also the so-called low, gra low grade microorganisms. Point eight. Point eight is very relevant, uh, uh, especially if we look the increases, uh, the increasing of uh, the antibiotic resistance. Any lab must use some guidelines, which are these, the EUCAST guidelines, and any lab must report the minimal inhibitory concentration in the report. Any lab must uh, identify the proper antibiotic pa panel on the basis of the own, uh, the own uh, resistance, uh, uh, regional resistance or the counter resistance. We need to use at least one antibiotic per class. And on the basis of the resistance you have in your country, it's necessary to use maybe much more 
than antibiotics per class. The two last points are very, very imp important and are very relevant, especially for the future. The point nine is the using the molecular method and especially the next generation systems. I believe that this system need to be improved for now and need to be certified as well. Of course, they increase uh, the um, uh, sensibility, but at the same time, we need to be sure that we have collected the right sample without any contaminants. Otherwise, you increase again the number of false positive. Of course, any lab or a lab must use a standardized reporting policy, uh, which include also an agreement with the clinician in this case for with the orthopedic. So in conclusion, I think that we need to follow some next steps that will be the future. As first step, we need to rearrange the name, number of sample of the basis of clinical stage. For instance, in the acute stage, we can use uh, three samples, four samples, but in chronic uh, stage, of infection, we need to use many samples. And the, in low grade infection, for instance, we need to use many, many samples. A second point in the future, we need to perform for the future strict procedures for collection and the sample transportation. This is a really very, very huge bias in the uh, identification of the microbes. As last, we need to improve, of course, the rules, the, the use uh, routinely of the molecular test, but not without we have performed procedures for collection and for sample transportation to avoid, again, contamination. Thank you so much for your attention.